everyone and happy 2020. This is a tea time with Chloe, you can't see my mug, but it is my lovely one from New Look that says, let the adventure begin because we are at the beginning of a new year, a new decade, and hopefully the beginning of some really happy and prosperous times for the majority of us. I just wanted to talk to you basically about some thoughts regarding the end of 2019 and um, the beginning of 2020 and some goals for 2020 um, because I'm sure that that's something that's playing on a lot of people's minds at the moment. I know that not everyone agrees or believes in New Year's resolutions, um, but I do, even if I don't end up keeping them and I always like to go into a new year with some goals in mind. So, 2019. <laughs> On the whole, it was a very roller coaster year with like the lowest of lows and the highest of highs. I spent so much of the year feeling really ill and being in and out of hospital with my Crohn's and that's always something that's really difficult to deal with. But then I also had the massive high of taking my, sorry, the dog is sneezing in the background, but that wouldn't be a video on my channel without the dog making noise in the background, would it? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I also had the massive high of taking my mum on her first ever trip to Disneyland, um, getting engaged and going to New York for the first time, which was like a dream trip for me and planning our wedding. Uh, so 2019 will always be remembered by me as the year that we got engaged and you know we booked our wedding I found my wedding dress and all of these positive things happened, um, even though it started out really badly. Um, being totally honest with you, I'm not feeling particularly well again. Over the last six weeks or so, my Crohn's has started grumbling away a little bit, but I must say the last couple of days I have felt a little bit better again. So I'm hoping that maybe now the stress of the Christmas period is over and all of that hustle and bustle is over, I've been able to get some really good rest. Um, so I'm hoping that that's helped and that going into January, I will be feeling a lot better. So 2020, what are my goals? Well, obviously the biggest thing is that we're getting married in 2020 and um so i i just can't wait for that it's not really goal related but it's something that i'm really looking <coughs> archie obviously the wedding isn't really um goal related i don't really have any goals in relation to the wedding other than just making it there in one piece and you know getting through my vows without falling over or something um I don't have any weight related goals for my wedding either. I know a lot of people try and lose weight for their wedding, but I bought a wedding dress that fits me as I am now and I don't need to lose any weight. Um, so, I mean, I need to try not to gain too much, but dresses can be altered. So um, I've really taken the pressure off myself there. Um, the wedding is just this massive life experience that I just can't wait. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I just can't wait. We are really excited. And um, that was like the, the best thing about New Year's Eve for me this year is that I could say we were getting married this year. We're also going to Disney World next month. I can't believe we get to say that it's next month because we booked it like last April um, and all of a sudden it's next month. And I knew that it would come around quickly, but wow, it's come around really quickly. Um, we've booked all of our fast passes, we've booked all of our dining reservations and I finally have a little bit of money in my savings thanks to December payday um, to have a little bit of spending money to take with me. So that is fingers crossed all sorted and I really hope it'll all be okay. Um, and also next month, I'm taking my mum to the Harry Potter studio tour for the first time. She's never been um, and Will bought us tickets uh, in Christmas or Christmas 2018 and we're finally using them uh, next month. So there's some lovely things planned in already for the next couple of months and obviously the wedding in the summer. But in terms of goals, I actually have two really specific goals this year, um, which are really random ones. And um, some people might be like, hmm, that's a bit strange, but I have two really specific goals and then I have something that I'm toying with doing that I basically only discovered today, um, but I just wanted to talk to you about. My first really specific goal is that I would potentially like to start playing the violin again. I'm, I'm somebody that always needs a project, something to focus on. So last year I finished my degree. Can't believe I didn't mention that earlier. That was like one of my biggest achievements of 2019. I finished my master's degree and I found out that I passed. So this year in October, I will be graduating as Chloe Murray MA, although actually by the time we graduate, I'll be Chloe Prendergast, which is 
crazy <laughs> and scary to think about. Um, but yeah, um, I finished my degree and obviously in August the wedding will be over. So I'm gonna need a project. And I'm thinking that I might like to start playing the violin again. I don't know if I've ever actually really mentioned it on this channel, but I actually played the violin for like seven or eight years when I was a kid. And I really enjoyed it, but I was just rubbish at practicing. My parents were never on at me to practice. I just had one lesson a week. And I squandered the opportunity basically um, to become good at playing the violin. I could hold a tune and I could read music, but that was about it. So um, I still have my violin and I'm pretty sure that it would still be the right size. It's a three quarter size, I think. And I haven't really grown since I was 14 when I gave up. So I might dig the violin out and start trying to learn again, like maybe even find some lessons or, take an online course or just use YouTube, I might try and um, play the violin again. I think that could be really fun. My second goal is actually to do with Archie. Um, if you are new here, by the way, Archie is one of my dogs. I have two dogs, a Yorkie called Archie and he is three. He's gonna be four in March. And I have a Dachshund called Winnie, a miniature smooth haired Dachshund, and she is 10. She's gonna be 11 in October. Archie obviously heard me say his name because he's just run up to me from downstairs, but I will show him to you in case you've never seen him before and you are new here. Um, and if you are new here, I would love if you would subscribe to see more of us. So this is Archie, he's my good boy. And unfortunately, Archie is terrified of having his nails clipped. So he had a really bad experience at a groomer when he was about 18 months old. Um, so we're talking about, we're talking about two and a half years ago now, um, almost. And it was really bad. Um, I didn't obviously know about it until I picked him up, but um, they clipped his nails and they cut his nails to the quick, which is obviously extremely painful and it bleeds. Uh, they also accidentally cut him with the shavers and I also found out that they had pinned him down. Um, I can't really even talk about it without getting upset because it's caused so much stress and anxiety in his little life and therefore in my life. Um, but basically he's terrified of having his nails clipped now and he's also terrified of anything similar, so any sort of similar experience. So when he goes to the vet, he gets really frightened. He doesn't like being brushed. Um, we have a really amazing groomer now who is fantastic with him. We've got to the point now where he's comfortable for her to groom him. As you can see at the moment, his fur is quite short um, because he's recently been to the groomer before Christmas, but his nails are incredibly long and um, when he came back from the groomer after Christmas, you could really see how long his nails were. So I sort of addressed it in my weekly vlog and just like begged people not to judge me basically, uh, cause it's not my fault. Um, I've consulted two behaviorists who have both given me some brilliant advice, but it's just not really working, um, in the short term. It's something that I'm going to have to carry on doing sort of every day for a really long time. Um, but I've also joined a group called Nail Maintenance for Dogs, um, which has some files that go right back to basics on how to help dogs who have been traumatized in the past and who struggle having their nails clipped. So very long story, but basically my goal for 2020 to do with Archie is to get him to the point where I can clip his nails. Um, even if they're not back at a healthy length by the end of the year, if on December 31st, I can use the nail clippers and clip one of his nails, I will be absolutely over the moon. So that's something that I want to incorporate into our daily routine is working with Archie and the clippers. And in the beginning, it is literally gonna be as basic as just having the clippers in the room and having him be able to tolerate them being in the room. Because even if I get them out at the moment, he completely panics and screams and hides and bites me. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a really long process. I think it really will take all year, um, but it's something that I desperately want to work on this year. So yeah, clipping Archie's nails is my other very specific goal 
for 2020. I haven't had any of my tea yet. So those are my two really specific goals for 2020. I have a list of projects that I would like to complete, which I actually just wrote in my bullet journal a couple of hours ago, because I set up my bullet journal for 2020. So I do have like a list of things that I want to do and complete in 2020, but they're not really like goals. It's just like paint the shed, like paint my chest of drawers, complete my 2019 project live scrapbook, stuff like that. Um, complete all of my outstanding scrapbooks. <laughs> um, and obviously I want to continue to better myself um, and work on my physical health and my mental health, but that's something that's ongoing throughout like every year that I try and do. I've exercised more in the last two years than I have in my whole entire life. And that's something I want to continue trying to do. Um, I've eaten better in the last two years than I have done in probably about six or seven years. So again, I want to continue that. Um, but yeah, on the whole, those are like the two main goals that I want to complete. And um, the last thing is uh, to do with my finances. So instead of just saying I want to save more, this year I am toying with the idea of doing a no buy slash low buy year, um, whereby you don't buy anything non-essential all year, or if you do like a low buy year, you buy a minimal amount of non-essential items all year. And I think that's what I'm veering towards. So my physical health for the past sort of five years hasn't been very good. Um, when I was a child and I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, I was very poorly, but I um, managed to get better and I would go long periods without having any more issues. Unfortunately, Crohn's is often triggered by stress. So a relapse will be triggered by stress. And obviously being an adult, you have more stress in your life than when you're a child. And so my relapses have become closer and closer together. You can't come back up because now I've got my tea. <laughs> so like I said, I was very poorly at the beginning of this year and I've been feeling a little bit iffy again. Um, and it obviously affects my work. At the beginning of the year, I was off work for two and a half months and I quit my full-time office job in 2016, which I had quite a good wage for, um, in order to work in a school because it was shorter hours and I mean, it was part, it's part time, the job that I do. Um, so shorter hours and you also get the school holidays. But obviously that has issues in and of itself. For example, Will and I are trying to look at a honeymoon option at the moment and we would really love to go to Hawaii, but we're not sure we're gonna be able to make that work because at the moment with paying for the wedding, we don't have the money to book the honeymoon. Um, and it's twice as expensive to go in the school holidays as it is um, to go during term time, but I just don't know what job I'm going to be doing. I am toying with changing jobs, um, but I haven't got anything set in stone. I haven't got any timings. I don't know what I'm going to do. So, um, yeah, working in a school has its issues, but I did it because one, I love kids, but also I was doing it for the good of my physical health. Um, but obviously working part-time, and working in a school, I don't get paid very much money and money is a real um, struggle for me. And it's a cause of a lot of distress for me. So yesterday when we were looking up, um, up honeymoon options, I just got really upset and I've spoken about it recently on my channel as well when I, I think I did a video that was like an honest, like homey week and I had like a mental health chat in it. Um, but, I got really upset because I feel like everything is Will's responsibility. It's all on his shoulders all the time because I can't work full time like everyone else. I'm getting upset again. This is so silly, but like I feel so useless all the time. It's a real sense of just being useless. And like Will has never said anything to make me feel that way. He never like, please don't think this is coming from him because it's not at all. Otherwise, I wouldn't be marrying him because I would not be marrying somebody who makes me feel bad about myself. Trust me. It's coming from me. It's my own sense of self-worth. Um, and I just feel useless at the moment. And I want to be able to earn more money or at least save more money so that we can go on these holidays without Will having to foot the bill for it. And I can contribute more to things. And yeah, I just... 
I really need to get a handle on my financial situation basically. So for the first time in three years, in 2020, I'm upping my work hours. I'm essentially doing an extra week every month. That's how much I've upped my hours. Um, so hopefully that will have an impact on my uh, monthly wages um, to enable me to contribute more to things and to put more money into my savings. Um, but I'm toying with the idea of doing this no buy slash low buy year because a lot of the things that I do buy, and I don't actually buy that much stuff because I don't have the money to, but a lot of the things I do buy are pointless. They're just, it's just stuff. And so I really want to declutter the house, declutter my life in general, and um, really try and commit to not buying things this year. Um, and I feel like I've really been quite successful with this in a lot of ways. Like I say, I don't really buy that much stuff. Um, I used to buy the dogs so much stuff and I don't do that anymore. They only get what they need. I mean, Archie's got a whole basket full of toys and I replaced his equa fleece this year because he needed one with legs. And that's about it. Like I, I really try to not buy unnecessary things for them. I've also pretty much stopped buying books because I basically have my own personal library. I have enough unread books to last me this year at least. So um, I've pretty much stopped buying books and I don't often buy scrapbook supplies either. Um, I very rarely buy clothes. Um, so I sort of don't really know where a lot of my money's going. I think a lot of it goes on food because I'm lazy. I go to the shop and buy lunch when I'm at work a lot of the time um, or I buy a takeaway if Will's out or I you know, nip to Sainsbury's on my way home, things like that, and it, it needs to stop. Um, but also occasionally I do have a bit of a spend up, so like I'll buy a spirit jersey because I really love it and I need it, but actually that's like between 40 and 60 pounds, depending on what one I'm buying. And yeah, it might be the only thing I buy for like two months, but still that's 60 pound that could have gone into my savings. So yeah, I'm I'm really wanting to commit to this whole no buy, low buy year, um, but there are gonna be exceptions. So the main reason that I want to do it is so that we can travel more for the next couple of years because by the end of 2021, I want to be thinking about having a baby. So these big trips that we want to do need to sort of happen in the next two, two and a half years. So I want to save money so that I can travel. So I am going to be spending money on travel obviously on our like weekly food shop and um, petrol and personal hygiene products and stuff like that, but I'm just not gonna buy those things to excess. Um, like I don't need to buy three different moisturizers to try them out, I could just buy and use one, <laughs> um, which I mostly do anyway, but you know what I mean, it's just an example. Um, Again, like not buy the dogs excessive things or not buy the rabbits excessive things. I often buy toys for the rabbits when really all they want is like a toilet roll tube. <laughs> so um, cutting out things like that and um, yeah, just really minimizing the unnecessary spending and putting my finances towards things that matter like travel and savings. So yeah, so yeah those are my sort of goals for 2020. I would love to hear what you are planning for this year, if you've got anything fun in the calendar already and what your goals are for this year, or if you don't have any goals at all, let me know, I would love to know. Um, and I will see you in my next video. I managed to upload 55 videos in 2019, which I think is pretty good considering I spent the first three months basically like entirely out of action. So um, my goal this year is to beat 55. The year before I did 45 and then in 2019 I did 55 so let's see if I can do 65 in 2020. <laughs> I will see you in my next video guys.